EC201. So for a brief uh, review of what happened the last time, we are now in a position to build our first working amplifier, which is also called the common source amplifier. The aim of the bias network is to keep the transistor M1 in what region? M1 is operating in saturation and if RA parallel RB is much much larger than RS then the incremental voltage at the gate is approximately equal to Vs. Okay, well, by the way, what is uh, the voltage across this battery here? Vds1. Okay. What is the DC voltage across RL? Oh, RL1. Zero. So we concluded that the incremental voltage at the output, okay, that is the one voltage here, is the same as the incremental voltage here. The only difference between these two nodes are that their quiescent values are they are different. Okay, the quiescent uh, uh, DC voltage at the drain of M1 is VDS1, and since the capacitor is an infinite, uh, I mean the infinite capacitor acts like a battery, the quiescent voltage at the output is VDS1 minus VDS1, which is then what did we say? We said that if uh, we wanted gain, we would choose uh, typically, given that you wanted to build an amplifier in the first place, you will choose GM times RL parallel RL1, which is the incremental gain from Vs to V out to be much, much larger than 1, alright? Which means that if the waveform at, uh, if the node X is rising in potential. Can you make any comment about uh, the uh, the uh, voltage at the drain of M1 due to Vs? The voltage at uh, X, let's say, is increasing. What can you say about the voltage at uh, the drain of M1? It will be decreasing because the incremental output voltage V out okay is minus gm rl parallel rl1 times vs so if the gate is going up the drain is always going down and what does this mean this means that when vs is increasing the gate potential is increasing while the drain potential is decreasing in other words the transistor is being the, is moving towards the triode region okay all right so, it is only a matter of going on increasing the amplitude, you will eventually definitely end up with an amplitude so that the transistor is actually in the triode region and the last time around we did some math and figured out the value, the amplitude Va that is required for the source, that is the maximum amplitude of the source that will make sure that the transistor just barely reaches the edge of the saturation region at the highest point in the positive cycle. Hmm? Okay, so if the amplitude exceeds that VA max 1, alright, what will happen? There will be a part of the cycle, of the input cycle, during which what happens? Okay, let me say the this was the drain waveform, drain voltage waveform. So this is time this is the drain voltage waveform, it is riding over a DC value of VDS1, okay. And, okay, let us say this corresponds to VA max, corresponds to an input of VA max 1, so that this amplitude is then, what is this amplitude? This is GM times RL parallel. RL1 times VA max, VA max 1. Okay. Now let me ask you the question, if I increase the amplitude beyond VA max 1, what do you think will happen? At what point in this cycle 
does the transistor just get to the edge of the cryode region? The negative peak, so this is where the transistor M1 just and just enters enters the triode beam. Is this understood by everybody? Alright. Now if I increase the amplitude of the input a little more, can somebody help me if, uh, draw the uh, draw the sine wave? So what can one say about this point at t equal to zero here? It will remain the same. Okay. Alright. What happens uh, say somewhere here? At this point, what do you, what can you, uh, can you make any comment on? Pardon? Okay. The, the amplitude on the negative side has to increase. So, let's say it's something like this. Okay. Then, what happens? Uh, eventually, at some point in time, before this time, the transistor will reach the triode region. But the input is still increasing. So, any comments on what will happen now? If the amplifier was perfectly linear, what would happen? If this triode, this whole concept of triode didn't exist. Ideally, it should continue as a sine wave, nicely like this, and keep going. Now, what do you think happens? So why are we so worried about triode? What happens in the triode region? What is the equivalent circuit of the MOSFET in the triode region? What are the equations of the MOSFET in the triode region? In the triode region. What is Y11? Yes, people. What is Y11 of the MOSFET when it's operating in triode? Zero. zero. What about Y12? Zero. Y12 is zero. Okay. What is Y21? Okay, what is the formula for Y21? Do ID by do VGS. Okay. Alright. And in the triode region, what is the equation for the MOSFET? What is ID? So, ID in triode is mu n C ox W by L times VGS minus VT whole square, who said whole square, times VDS minus VDS square by 2. Okay, which implies do ID by do VGS is mu n c ox w by l times times vds you differentiate this with respect to vds so you only get the first term is the only one which contributes and clearly the derivative is mu n c ox w by l times vds okay all right so this is y21 and what about y22 what is the relationship for, uh, how would I find Y22? Do ID by Do VDS. Very good. And what is that now? Look at this expression. And tell me what uh, Do ID by Do VDS is. Mu N C of W by L times VGS minus VT minus VDS. Okay. Alright. Whereas in saturation, Y22 is? So, when the transistor was in saturation, the GN or the Y21 was mu and C of W by L times VGS minus VT and Y22 was 0. The moment the transistor gets into the triode region, what is happening to uh, GN? A Y21. Can you make any comment on the the GM in triode versus the GM in saturation? Yes, sir. I mean the GM certainly depends on VDS. 
Can you say, can you tell me whether the GM in triode is larger than that in saturation or smaller? Smaller. Why? Why is it smaller? The, the definition of the triode region is that the VDS of the device is less than or equal to VGS minus VT. So this term here can never exceed VGS minus VT if the device is in triode. Okay? Which means that the Y21 of the device in the triode, when it's operating in the triode region, is definitely going to be smaller than the GM or the GM or the Y21 when the device is operating in the saturation region. That's one, one aspect. The other aspect is that in the saturation region, Y22 is zero. Alright? In the triode region, Y22 is, is not zero. So what does that uh, uh, order for the gear, for the incremental gain? Physically, what's happening? There's this current source Y21 times VG, VGS, the incremental uh, gate source voltage, and that current goes through. Uh, what is the expression for gain? Is the incremental equivalent circuit? Okay. This is Y21 V. GS and then okay, there is RL parallel RL1 so this is the equivalent circuit in in saturation in triode what happens in the triode region not only so you have suddenly a Y22 appearing ok and this chap here is smaller than and this is Y22. The gain here was nothing but Y21 times RL parallel RL1. This is the expression for the gain in the saturation region. The gain in the triode region is nothing, can somebody tell me what the gain in the triode region is? It's minus Y21 triode times RL parallel RL1 parallel 1 over Y2 ok does this make sense so in the triode region the current source now has got a finite output impedance ok the output impedance was infinity in the, when the uh, the transistor was in saturation when it is in triode there is a finite output impedance and that finite output impedance comes in parallel with in parallel with the load. To add to the misery, the Y21 in the triode region is also smaller than the Y21 in saturation. So it's now a double whammy, right? So the gain, the incremental gain of the MOSFET or the incremental gain of the amplifier is now much smaller in the triode region when it when compared to the saturation region. Is that clear? Now that we understand what happens, let us try and see what happens on this graph. The increment, if the incremental gain remained what it was, you would have seen that the sine wave would have continued on like this. Okay? That is if the incremental gain was what it was in the saturation region. Now the incremental gain has reduced. Which means what? The change in the input will now cause a smaller change in the output. Okay? When compared to the case when the transistor would have been in saturation. Does that make sense? So, what should have been a nice clean sine wave like this will now have a reduced gain. In the increment, since the incremental gain is reduced, what you will see is some waveform with a with a flat top like that. Alright. So if you put in a sine wave and you get something where the sine wave is chopped off during some part of the cycle, what is that? What I mean what all what all Fourier components are present in the input? Yeah, okay, it's an impulse spectrum, okay? The only comp frequency components are that corresponding to the input. If the input has got a frequency F1, that is a sine wave of frequency F1, they will only be 
to expand the input which is periodic in a Fourier series, you will get only one term hmm? corresponding to the fundamental. Now, if I took the sine wave and chopped off the, the lower portion of it, what can I expect when I expand this in a Fourier series? I mean, this output is also periodic. So, when I expand this in a Fourier series, what do you think I will get? I will also see harmonics, okay? At uh, frequency, you know, uh, in principle, at all frequencies at multiples of the fundamental frequency. And this is what is called this phenomenon when you put in a clean sine wave and you get, uh, you know, a sine wave with all sorts of other harmonics, which typically happens when you have a nonlinear system, is called distortion. Okay? Alright? And clearly the output doesn't look like a sine wave, so even visually you can look at, you can understand why it is called distorted, right? The output doesn't look like a sine wave anymore. And that's something that you would want to, you want to avoid in many, situ in, in most situations, okay? Or you want to minimize it at any rate. If I increase the amplitude even more, what do you think will happen? It will get clipped off earlier, okay? And you can see that this uh, new waveform is uh, hardly hardly reminds one of a sine wave. Okay, it looks more squarish. Is that understood? Now let's see what happens to what happens in the other extreme, which is the negative half of the input cycle and what did we see that time? In the negative half of the input cycle, I hope now you see the motivation why I went and calculated that VA max 1, alright, which gives us the maximum amplitude of the input permissible which will still keep the transistor operating in the saturation region across all points in the positive half cycle of the input. Because if I exceed that value, then some portion of the output will simply get clipped off. And clearly, this VA max 1 depends on, on what? What all does VA max 1 depend on? It depends on the operating point because the operating point is telling you how much you know, uh, the drain can, uh, if the drain was say initially some 1 volt above the gate and the threshold voltage of the device was uh, say 0.5 volts, then how low can the drain swing before the device enters triode? The drain was initially sitting 1 volt above the gate and what is the definition of uh, limit of uh, the saturation region? How low can the drain go below the gate? The drain can go 1 threshold below the gate. Okay, and if the gain is high, can you make any comment on the swing at the drain versus the swing uh, swing at the gate? Which will be larger, the swing at the gate or the swing at the drain? The swing at the drain has to be many many times the swing at the gate. So, like all good engineers, we assume that the gate doesn't swing at all. Okay, and it's only the drain which is swinging, which means that if the drain was initially one volt above the gate, you could go down by 1 volt and you could go down by further VT. Since the VT is half a volt, the drain can go down 1.5 volts below the the peak swing at the drain can in other words be 1.5 volts. Does it make sense? I mean this gain being large argument is uh, I think came out in the formula also. It is, what is the formula? VDS1 minus VA max 1 was VDS1 minus VGS1 plus Vt divided by 1 plus GMRO, GMRL parallel RL1. GMRL parallel RL1, RL1 is the gain. Okay? This 1 is coming because of this, the gate is also swinging. If GMRL parallel RL1 is much larger than 1, okay, which is equivalent to saying the gain is high, then you can forget about that 1 in the denominator and you will approximately get Vg minus Vg plus Vt divided by the gain. Does it make sense? So the next thing is to look at the negative half. During the negative half input cycle, what do you think is happening? 
the VDS is uh, is increasing or decreasing? During the negative half input cycle, the gate is going down, which means the drain is going up. So VDS is increasing. So we don't have to worry about the device trying to get into the triode region. In fact, it's getting pushed more into saturation. Okay. However, what is happening to the current through the MOSFET? The ID, the drain current of the MOSFET is nothing but the quiescent current which is ID1 plus the incremental current. The incremental current simply being GM Vs. So clearly if you go on increasing the input amplitude during the negative half of the cycle what happens? The drain current, the drain current through the transistor, so this is nothing but ID, okay, it rides over this quiescent value of ID1. During the positive half of the cycle, the current is increasing. During the negative half of the cycle, the current is decreasing. And this amplitude is GM. Yeah, if VA is the input amplitude, GMVA is the amplitude of the current riding over the quiescent current. Okay? So, if VA is going on increasing, eventually I will end up with a situation where this reaches, the current in the MOSFET goes to zero. When the current in the MOSFET goes to zero, what happens to the GM? GM is proportional to square root ID. Okay, so the current goes to zero, the GM must go to zero, the GM goes to zero, the gain goes to, the incremental gain of the mass transistor goes to zero. Hmm? So what do you think will happen to the drain voltage waveform at this time? So if I plot V drain, quiescent input, what is the uh, voltage of the drain? VDS1 and during this part of the cycle what happens? What happens to the voltage? it decreases during this part of the uh, during the negative part of the input cycle the drain potential increases over and above the quiescent value and when the current through the transistor has reached zero what do you think will happen to the drain potential think carefully why is it vdd what is the equivalent circuit uh, at the output you have the transistor. Think carefully. Okay, let's think to this together. So this is RL. What is RL? RL1. RL. Okay. And then we had the, this is VDD. We had the capacitor. And what is the capacitor? It's equivalent to battery of value. VDS1. And what is this? RL1. Okay, the current through the MOS transistor drain is is what precisely at that point where the current uh, where the lowest point in the cycle. At that point, what is the current through the MOS, what is the total current through the MOSFET? It is zero. So, in other words, it means that as this is a zero, there is no current flowing through the MOSFET. I can as well remove the transistor altogether. And I am interested in finding this potential. Correct? What is that potential now? How will I find it? If I call this VD, what do I do? VDD minus VD by RL must be equal to Vd minus Vds1 by R1. That makes sense? Which means what? Vd is nothing but Vd times 1 over Rl plus 1 over RL1 must be equal to 
VDD by RL plus VDS1 by RL. Is that correct? VDS it's VDD times RL VDD times ok plus VDS1 times by RL plus RL please note that this is not equal to VDD you understand what values of RL1 will allow, will make this equal to VDD? Is there some special choice of RL1 which will make this equal to VDD? I mean, you don't have to look at, you can look at this diagram. If RL1 didn't exist, if RL1 was infinite, when the current of the MOSFET is zero, VD will simply go to VDD because no current will be flowing through RL. Does that make sense? In other words, uh, the drain current of the MOSFET tends to boost hits zero the sine wave will just hit this value ok this absolute potential happens to be the absolute potential happens to be VDD times this is the absolute potential now if I increase the input amplitude beyond this value ok and what is the ok by the way what is the amplitude VA required so that the drain current just touches zero that VA max 2 is simply ID1 by G. if I now increase the input amplitude to a value greater than ID1 by GN then what do you think will happen? The drain current will be larger during the positive half of the cycle. What happens in the negative half? It will do this. Ok? And what happens? It can't go below 0. Alright? Ok? And then what happens here? it does this. So what happens to the sine wave? It will be larger then it will continue to be it will continue to do this however beyond this point the current to the MOSFET is zero ok that is uh, here then what will happen to the voltage? The current through the MOSFET is zero, so the voltage at the drain will remain like this, and then follow the sine wave again. Okay, so the violet curve corresponds to uh, an input which is larger than that limit. Okay, so V A max two. which is ID by GM defines the maximum amplitude of the input signal in the negative half of the cycle ok that will what happens to the transistor if the uh, uh, input amplitude exceeds this ID by, G, ID by GM2 the drain current in the MOSFET goes to 0 and that is called cut off and even when the transistor is cut off so this is where the transistor is cut off that is uh, ok this region here the transistor is cut off or simply off and uh, you can see that in that case too the incremental gain is 0 which means that if you put a sine wave in where the top of the sine wave is chopped off uh, you know by the same token uh, of what happens in the uh, triode region this means that there will be Fourier components 
other than the components that were there in the input. Clearly, we see the following that if the input amplitude exceeds certain maximum, then I mean the output sine wave will no longer look like the input sine wave. It will be chopped off either at the top or at the bottom. Okay? So given VA max 1 and VA max 2, what is the maximum limit on the amplitude of the input which will result in some the output looking somewhat like a sine wave? So the minimum of VA max 1 and VA max 2 is the maximum input amplitude permissible without clipping. Drawing a diagram, for example, let me plot the VDS of the MOSFET versus ID of the MOSFET and let us say this was the initial quiescent operating point which corresponds to ID1 and VDS1. Hmm? So during the positive half of the input cycle, where do, which way do you think the operating point is shifting? It can shift up, down, left, right. Which way? Draw the limit of the dry out region on this, uh, on this graph. How will it look like? It will look something like this. It turns out that this is actually a parabola. Okay, you can prove that easily from that equation, uh, the MOS equation. But anyway, physically it makes sense because the higher I am, I go in this direction. What does it mean? About the VGS, what does it mean? If my operating point was here versus here, operating point 1, operating point 2, which one has got a larger VGS? 1. Okay, so if the VGS is larger, what can you say about... Uh, 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 VGS1 minus VT will be larger. So, the limit of the triode region is defined when VDS hits becomes equal to VGS1 minus VT. So, it, if you are here, you must be able, you must get into the triode region earlier than when you are at operating point 2. Okay? Which is why the limit of the triode region is closer to operating point 1 and farther away from operating point does it make sense? So the limit of the triode region is some parabola like that. So if the initial operating point was this, if I plot the locus of ID versus VDS as the input is changing, what do you think happens? What is happening when the input during the positive half of the input cycle, what is happening to the current? The drain current of the MOSFET is increasing and the VDS is decreasing. Okay? Alright, so it moves towards the left because VDS is decreasing and moves towards the top because the ID is increasing. Okay, is this going to be, uh, so if I plot the join all those points, what is the locus of that going to be? I mean, I can go to the left and top like this, I can go like this, I can do this, they all go left and top eventually. Huh? So, what do you think the locus of the points will be? The easiest thing is to say a straight line. The question is, why is it a straight line? This is, please note that we are making the small signal approximation, which is that the incremental ID is linearly proportional to the incremental VGS and the incremental drain potential is GM times RL parallel RL1 times the incremental gate source voltage. So the incremental change in the drain source, I mean the incremental change in the drain voltage has to be related to the incremental change in the drain current through a linear equation. That's the assumption we have made. Okay? Which means that it will go towards the left and the top and it must do something like this. Similarly, what happens... Uh, during uh, when the input is uh, during the negative half of the cycle, what happens? During the negative half of the cycle, what is happening to VDS? When the input is goes low, the drain goes up. 
So the VDS is increasing, decreasing. VD is going up, so VDS has to increase. What is happening to the current? Decreasing. So it is going down and it is going towards the right. And the locus of those points also has to be the straight line. Okay? Alright. So now the obvious question is if you have a straight line, what I mean you know one point on the straight line, what else do you need to know to know? You need to know the slope. So what is the slope? It is the slope has to be negative. Okay? And what should be the dimensions of the uh, in other words we are trying to find do I D by do V D S. Okay? So, if the transistor current changes by a little bit, we are trying to find what happens to the drain for, uh, to the drain potential. Okay? And if the transistor current changes by a little bit, that little bit of current goes through the incremental resistance at the drain, causing an incremental change in the drain source voltage. And so, this slope must be equal to minus 1 over RL parallel RL1 when the transistor is in operating in the saturation region. So that is the slope here. The woman thinks go into the triode region. We don't know if this part of this, the straight line is is true anymore. Okay, certainly the gain must decrease. Okay, because we discussed that, and this is the point where the transistor gets cut off. Okay, so M1 is cut off. M1 at this point is when M1 enters triode. Can somebody look at this line and say in this particular example will the absolute, the maximum swing you can put into the amplifier to avoid clipping, will that be limited by the triode region, or distance to the triode region or the distance to cut off? Obviously the distance to the triode region. Okay? So, if you want to maximize the input amplitude before clipping sets in, what would you do to the operator? How would you choose the initial operating point? I would, if I chose it to be for example here, that's not a good choice either because I will now be limited by the transistor going into cutoff. If I choose, choose it to be too close to the boundary of the triode region, I will be limited by the transistor going into the triode region. Okay, so an op a good choice of operating point is to choose it such that it the the sine wave just enters the triode region during the positive the maximum positive input. Okay, and just enters the, the transistor just gets cut off when the bottommost part of the negative half of the cycle. In other words, in mathematical terms, what should I do? If I make VA max 1 equal to VA max 2, then I will be able to maximize the input swing permissible before clipping sets in. Uh, under those conditions, the, the uh, transistor will just enter the triode region during the positive half of the input cycle and just enter, will, will just be cut off okay, in the lowest point of the negative half of the input cycle. Okay.